Good morning everyone, it's Kathy Champion and I am your Independent Stamping Up Demonstrator. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I send a very special welcome to you. And if you're my tried and true um, crafty family that always uh, supports me here, God bless you. I love you very much and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for always being here, supporting me, uplifting me, and encouraging me. And, if, like I said, if you're new, welcome. We're so glad to have you. And if you would, if you like what you see and you want to see more of my creativity, hopefully a little inspiration to uh, pack away in your brain for your um, crafty needs, um, hit that subscribe button. It means so much. Okay, without any further ado, the first thing I want to do is just uh, show you our host code and remind you, if you spend $50 or more uh, before shipping and tax uh, and use this host code, you will receive a free gift from me. So I will send it out uh, to you the month after the ending of the month that you order. So if you don't get it right away, just hold tight. It will be on its way, I promise. So, But if you spend $150 uh, retail before shipping and handling, do not use that code. Um, Stamping Up will give you incentives. If you use this code, you won't get their incentives. So. Uh, and they're, what they give you is much better, believe me. You will earn money back for free products that you can use uh, that will be shipped with your order. So that's a great incentive to spend a little bit more money. Um, and, you know, it's Christmas, so you may have somebody special in your life that uh, is a crafter as well. And um, maybe they are interested in some of the crafting supplies. So you can always do a cute little bundle or something and give that away as a Christmas gift. Okay, without any further ado, if you remember correctly, the other day we um, we had this video up uh, making these little tags. Well, after I got off uh, from making the tags, I thought, how cute would it be to make a card with using those colors? So I went into my stash and I pulled out real red, garden green, and of course the white card base. And I used my plaid builder and I cut this out of the red and this out of the green and I put that together to make this beautiful card. Um, and then I took just a tiny piece of the garden green, it was actually a scrap, and I scored it a quarter inch on each side, folded it together, I punched a hole in it with a hole punch and I tied my tag onto that and then adhered it to my card. And look what a cute card that made. And yes, the tag is removable so the person that gets this can enjoy the card this year, take the tag off and have a beautiful tag for next year. So it's kind of a two for one. And inside I did my mats using the same color. So it's white, green, and red. As on here, it's um, white, red, and green. So I coordinated my colors so that everything looks really pretty. And what gave me this idea was using this, um, the bow builder um, and the bow, uh, it leaves me gift wrapped the gift wrap stamp set and the bow builder um, and it is a bundle in the, in the holiday catalog right now so if you're interested in grabbing that go over and get that um, as soon as you can because that catalog is coming to an end y'all so it won't be long that everything that's in there will be gone and I do understand they're going to bring some of those products back in the new annual catalog. They're also going to bring some of those back next year in our holiday catalog. So, but uh, I will be supplying you with a list. I'm going to move this over out of the way. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a card just like that, but I wanted to use these colors, which was the Rococo Rose and the Just Jade. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a card base. Let's see if I have one up here. I know I like to keep my card bases close by where I can grab one when I need them. 
and I want one that opens this way. So these are my horizontal ones and I'm going to use a white because I want to make sure that my colors are coordinating the same. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and cut our pieces. So I'm going to cut this piece of uh, Rococo Rose down. And I'm just going to cut this in half and then in half again. So I'm going to cut it at five and a half. And then at four and a quarter. Just like that. And then I've got this just jade. And I'm going to need it to be, because this is the, the die that I'm going to use on here. So let me look and see exactly what this measures. And it's probably five and a half. It's actually five and three quarters. But we're going to cut this to five and a half. So we have those pieces cut, and I am going to cut this piece first, and what I want to do is I want to lay this on here where I'm getting the best bang for my buck as far as making sure that it is covering the entire piece of cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this into my die machine. And I'm going to cut this first because I don't want anything to move on this. Now you're going to hear some cracking and popping because we're cutting straight edges. And I'm going to run it back through just to make sure that we're getting a good cut. Okay. Now I'm going to bring that over on my piece. And I'm going to lift this up. Like so. And this is going to give quite a bit of mess. It's okay. I do have my box with my little foam mat in it, so I'm going to take my die and lay it over. And I'm going to use my brush tool on my take your pick tool, and I am going to clean this die. Look how simple that was to clean that out. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to lay the piece into the box, and I'm just going to rub this over it. And this works so good for getting all your pieces out. And I just used a little paper pumpkin box um, to catch all my pieces, which works out perfect. And it's nice to keep all of this kind of wrinkled in here. And then you don't have um, you don't have those pieces all over your desk and the floor. And um, it just really saves on your cleaning up. And I love it. So if you've got any little stubborn pieces like that, just use your pick on your take your pick tool and you can clean those out just like that. That piece looks perfect. So now I'm going to take these and I'm just going to dump them right in here so that when I get ready to clean this box, I can just clean everything in one, one um, dump. And I can just take this directly to my trash can and dump it and I won't have pieces all over everything. And that's just such a neat way to do this. That's always one of my biggest pet peeves with die cutting is getting all of those little tiny pieces everywhere. All right, we're going to do the same thing with this piece. I'm going to line it up over top of this. And I want to try to get it as even top, bottom, and sides as I can. Just like that. 
and I'm going to lay it down on my cut plate. And we're going to lay this over it, and we're going to take it to the machine and run it through. And it did look like it moved a little bit on transferring it over, so I'm just, I'm just going to straighten it up off camera. And when you take this off, this should be an easy clean because all we're needing is this piece right here. And there's our two die pieces. And that's going to go in there. So I'm just going to dump this in my box as well. And let's put our die machine back together. my guys over here. We've done with those for right now. All right. I actually have um, some little pieces that got caught up in my brush, but they cleaned out really quickly and very easily, so that was a good thing. All right, let's bring back over our card base. Now, what I want to do first is I want to lay this onto my card base and I want to see what kind of hangover I have. Oops, there's a little piece that didn't come out. When you lay it over top of the white, that's when you can really see exactly what you have. And this actually looks perfect. This looks like it's lining up um, absolutely perfect. So, we're not going to have to do any trimming on that. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to grab my liquid glue. I find that the liquid glue works better for this. And I am just going to take on all of these solid places, I'm just going to put a swirl of liquid glue. I find this is the easiest way to do this particular one. And the liquid glue will give you a little wiggle room when you put it to your card base so that you can get it on there nice and straight. I'd be afraid if I used the press and seal I would not have any wiggle room and I probably would end up having it on there crooked. So I'm going to hold my card base up and I am just going to do this number. Wiggle it until you get it as straight as you can and then just press it down. And if it's off a little bit, don't worry. We can always go back and trim this off. So that is fine and dandy. Now, I am going to take this piece. All right, I'm just going to use my liquid glue on this as well. And I am just going to run a line of glue. Yeah, and I'm getting it on my work surface. That's the reason I had this glass. Uh, here so I could clean it up easily. And here, and I'm going to run some out here and here. Finish running it down and over. I just thought this card was so stinking cute. Now you see the mess I made. But I'm going to get a wipe. And just wipe that up. And let's fan it really quick. That's an alcohol wipe, so it should draw fairly quick. And then I'm going to lay this back down. And what you want is you want the cross 
to go directly through the center oops of your little squares just like that Now I'm going to take a large block and just lay that on top of there just to let it um, adhere while I work on my next little piece. And I'm going to look in here and see if I have a scrap of either the Just Jade or the Rococo Rose. So I just need a tiny piece. a little strip of the Rococo Rose right here and I think this will work perfect and what I want to do is get a piece that's about an inch and a half so I know that if I take that to the end that's an inch and a half going in that direction so I'm just going to cut that off and then I want to score it at a quarter and turn it and score it at a quarter. And then you're going to have this little piece that folds like that. I might cut that again. Let's cut that maybe a quarter of an inch. I don't want it quite that big. So this piece is going to measure one and a half by three quarters. And again, like I said, I'm just I'm making just a little piece. And what I want to do is punch a hole in the middle of that. So I'm going to just grab my crocodile. You can use anything that you have that will punch a hole. And I'm going to look for the center and punch. Now this is ready to adhere to the front of our card. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess off. Just going to lay that in there like that and do it just a tiny little haircut. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to bring it down to the bottom for this, and I think you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. And I'm going to slice down. And all that does is just evens up this card to make it nice and squared. Not that it's a square, but you see what I'm talking about. So now we can go ahead and put our little tag on. What I like to do is run this through so my tag will go through if you have a floss threader, those work great. Um, it just makes it so simple to pull those through. And you can pick these up at Walmart over where the, um, the dental stuff is at. They just work so good, especially when you're dealing with this many strands of Baker's Twine. So get it through there like that. Once you get that through, then you can just pull. Oops, I lost one. Did you see that? All right, let's try this again. Let's take it out and pull this through your floss threader. Get it down low so it doesn't come out. Just like that. Oops. And then pull it through here and then just pull all of that through there. Now you have 
this on here like that. Maybe I needed to do it from the back. Yeah, I think it would have done better through the back. So let's try this again. Let's push all of the thread through there. And let's take this through the back. And pull it through. And you want to get this through before you glue this down. It looks like this is going to tuck back behind this just a little bit. And that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is separate my threads and attempt to tie a knot. So I'm going to tie it like that. And then we'll do a little bit of a bow. Once you get that bow tied down, then you can come back and play with your loops a little bit. Like that. It doesn't have to be in any, you know, style or whatever, just as long as it's looped. And then you want to pull it Once you get those loops like you want it, then you really want to pull those loops and tighten that down. Just like that. Now I'm going to use a glue dot, a couple of glue dots to put this down with because you want the recipient to be able to take this off. And the glue dots is going to allow you to do that. So I'm going to take, uh, take your pick tool and I just want to pull up one glue dot and I want to close this down. I'm going to put a glue dot on each side of this just like that and that's going to help hold that together. And another one right there. Then we are going to adhere this right here at the top in the center. And just match that down. And look at that. How stinking cute is that? And look how quick that went together. So now all we have to do is get our mats for the inside. So I'm going to go Just Jade, Rococo Rose, and White in the opposite direction that I did the front. So, just jade. So we're going to put a mat down in here. Put my little floss threader back up there. So we know that the first mat needs to be four by five and a quarter. Cocoa Rose at five by three and three quarters. And then that's going to go right on top of here, just like that, in a beautiful layer. And then we need a white. So I am going to grab a white card base or, or mat, and this one is going to be three and a half. By four and three quarters. And that one is going to mat on top of here. Don't worry about getting all the uh, measurements because that will all be listed in the description below. And 
um, I try to always make sure that y'all have all the instructions you need to make any of the projects that I make. So, because that's the fun of it, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one over and I am going to use some pressing, uh, stamp and seal on the back and there. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to do my my regular little thing. I'm going to lay it on the edge so it's not sticking. And I'm going to get my margin straight on one side, top and bottom, and then press the rest of it down. Now this piece we're going to stamp. So I want to find a beautiful stamp set. And y'all know I love 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 this one. And I think I'm going to stamp inside that Christmas Begins with Christ. I love that one. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we need a stamp block. And I'm going to get this nice and straight here. And I think since we went with the Rococo Rose throughout, I'm going to grab the Rococo Rose um, ink pad. And I am going to load up my ink. And I'm going to stamp right about here. So pretty. So pretty. And then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to put some more stamp and seal on here. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get this nice and even and then press it down. Then I'm going to turn it over. And you know with this, it's absolutely limitless your um, your your options for this because you could use any color, and this plaid builder um, die set can be used any time of the year. It's not just a Christmas stamp, uh, Christmas die. This can be used any time of the year for any card. I just love the plaid that it makes. I think it's so pretty. And there we go. Is that not adorable? I love it. I think it came together really quick. A very simple and easy card to make that really has a dramatic effect. So here's both of the cards. Um, I was inspired by the colors um, to, try to do this, and I think both of them are absolutely gorgeous in their own way. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you received inspiration. If you're interested in any of the products that um, you saw here, you can go to my website. I'll have it listed below and you can just shop directly from there. Everything will be shipped directly to you. And if you have any questions of anything that you purchase from me, please don't hesitate to reach out to me via email or phone call or however you need to reach me. Uh, if you send me a uh, text or a email leaving me a number and a good time to call you back I'll be more than glad to return your call so I hope everyone has a very blessed day 
I hope you stay healthy and happy, and I hope that this season, it is a little bit challenging this year with Christmas, but let's not forget the reason for the season. No matter the circumstances around us, we are still celebrating the birth of Jesus, our Savior. So until we craft again, let everything you do and say bring glory to our Lord in heaven. He is worthy. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.